Okay, so over the past year, I've made several videos of talking about what a general purpose rifle can do. Today, on the hottest day that we've had in Virginia for the past seven years, I've decided to come out and actually show you some things that a general purpose rifle can do. And I've set up three drills to illustrate that. This first drill is unusual. We're gonna simulate fighting or defensive use of a, of a general purpose rifle. Now, these targets are at 10 yards and I'm gonna do a headshot, a 10 yard headshot. You would call that a pistol or a rifle target. Most people would say pistol, but you know what? You can do some amazing stuff with a rifle if you're doing it right. You think about it, from, from leather, how fast can you come out of the holster and put one good shot on the head, an aimed shot, at 10 yards? A grandmaster may be a second. Most of us are not grandmasters. Two, two and a half seconds would be realistic. And I'm not talking about just, you know, the, the, the snapshot right, you know, three yards in front of you. This is an aimed shot. This is a headshot. So we're going to go for two, two and a half seconds. Now, since a rifle doesn't have a holster, we're going to come out of a sling. So this rifle is in the slung position. This is how you would carry it All in right. the field. Let's give this a go. Good headshot, 2.36. Let's give that one more try, just for fun. Two seconds, so under two and a half seconds. That's just one shot. What if we needed to shoot multiple people? Can you do it? Well, <laughs> the semi-auto is going to be a lot faster, but let's uh, let's give that a try anyway. I'm going to, uh, yeah, we'll start from slung again. Five point one eight seconds. So five seconds for multiple targets with a general purpose rifle. Could I have done that better with an AR-15? Absolutely. An AR-15 would be a much better choice for this situation. A handgun would do great in this situation. But a rifle, a bolt action rifle, can do it if you've set it up right. All right, for this next one, this is going to simulate your afternoon hunt. You're heading out to your deer stand for the afternoon. On your way there, you run into a deer. It's about a hundred or so yards out. You should be carrying your rifle in a ready position. Slung up, which means you need a Rhodesian or a Ching sling. Rest the gun on your hip. So we're gonna start from this position. We get to the edge of our field and we see a deer. like that. Now, could you have done that with an AR? Well, yes, but you usually aren't hunting with an AR. Could you have done either of those drills with a long-range precision rifle? I would say no. Those guns are not set up to be carried in the field uh, in a ready position. They are set up to be taken out to the location where you're going to be shooting. They're very effective for that. Now, as far as that goes, we're going to go to the next drill right. over at the fence. All right, so this last drill is to simulate long range shooting. Now, unfortunately, the range I have here, the maximum distance I can get is 356 yards. But the process that I'm going to show you would apply whether it's 356, 600, even 1,000. It's the same thing. You need to find out your range, and laser range finder helps. I just happen to know because I've ranged this a number of times. And for that, you also need to reconfigure the gun just a little bit. I'm gonna use this Spartan bipod and I'm gonna use 
this shooting bag. The game changer works better, but I'm just going to use a smaller one. And we are also going to have to remember to dial our elevation. Now, the other two drills, my rifle is normally zeroed at 100 yards, but when I'm out hunting, I keep it eight clicks up. So I'm two inches high at 100. That gets me dead on out to about 240 yards or so. I'm good to go on pretty much any target for that. But for long range shooting, that's not good enough. So I've dialed, I'm gonna dial this out and you can consult uh, you know, a ballistics app. You can have a ballistic chart taped to your stock. Doesn't need to be high tech. You can use a Kestrel or whatever you want and dial in. I happen to know that this is six and a half MOA for me. I also know that even though there's almost no wind, it fades slightly from left to right. There's a little bit of wind down there, not so much here. So it's just enough. I'm going to hold left edge of the target and that's the process for setting up the shot. So with that same rifle, everything, nothing has changed. Let's see about the long range capability. That hit. Could you hear it? Yeah. Yep. Well, let's do one more just to be sure, huh? That's two impacts. That one I could hear a lot better. So, general purpose rifle. Fighting, hunting, and long range. It can do it all. There are guns that can do each one of those better. But I don't think that there's a better configuration for something that can do all of it. So if you like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And by the way, thank you to Michael Bain, who talked about this concept on his podcast. I'll put a link to his podcast and to Triggered, where he discusses his thoughts on general purpose rifles. He really likes the SIG Cross. And initially, I didn't like the SIG Cross. I've warmed up to it. And actually, that might be... A rifle I regret selling so I've come to appreciate the SIG Cross but um, but this is a modified so I want to add a quick addendum to the video I uh, while we were out there it was so hot the uh, my phone overheated and cut off at the end basically all I was trying to communicate was that the SIG Cross is actually probably a really good choice for a general purpose rifle when I was evaluating it my expectations were probably not where they should have been, and I didn't fully appreciate some of the features that are on it. So wanted to get that out there and clear that up. Um, and other than that, the, oh, the other thing I realized I kind of failed to do on the video, I really didn't explain the time of the shot that I took in the hunting scenario, the 100 yard on a steel plate. Uh, that, I looked at it and it was about eight seconds. And I can do that much, much faster unless I'm shooting at a deer. If I'm shooting at a deer, I do need to make sure that I'm just perfectly steady. If I'm, if I'm at a training or some other com competitive type of thing, yeah, I'm going to get a shot off. I'm going to get a shot off fast. But if you are trying to make absolutely dead sure that you put a deer on the ground and you put one into the vitals, you do need to pause. You do need to take a little bit of time. The point is to be able to get into position very, very rapidly so that you can take that breath, get that, that respiratory pause, and press the trigger and assure yourself of a good clean hit. All right, so that's the addendum to the video. Sorry about the weird cutoff there. Thanks for watching.